What's up there? This is Trent at Faith Community Bible Church. We're back today looking at Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 18. And this is the episode 5 of these uh, videos that we're doing. We really hope that they are helpful for you as you engage with God's Word and that they're encouraging for you as you continue to think through the, uh, the stay-at-home order. It, seriously, it's like <laughs> right in my face. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> we... We want you to really be encouraged and, and built up during this time. And, and so, yeah, go ahead and turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at verses 8 through 18 today. And we want to remember what we're saying in all this. We're saying that the Bible is gospel-centered, that the Old Testament is Jesus-centered, that when God tells his story, he tells it in a God-centered way, and that our lives ought to conform to that God-centeredness. And now we're going to find specifically today, as we look at the passage, that Paul is going to encounter people who have never never heard the gospel, and not only that, but they've never maybe even heard the Old Testament. So how do you encounter a culture and speak to people who have never heard the Old Testament are not prepared in the moment to hear the gospel? Let's, let's watch this story unfold. So Acts chapter 14, starting in verse 8. So Paul and Barnabas move on. Now at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him, and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus whose temple was at the entrance to the city, and catch this, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these evil, or sorry, you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them to walk, oh sorry, skip the line, and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without a witness. For he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they were scarcely restrained uh, they scarcely restrain the people from offering sacrifice to them. So there's just a couple of things that I want you to, to notice in this story. So Paul and Barnabas go into Lyconium, or Lyconia, this area, and begin to preach the gospel and heal this man that's been crippled. And, and their immediate assumption is that the gods had come to visit them in person. And Paul and Barnabas were viewed as these two distinct gods. Now that's important because when we view events, when we see things unfold in our lives, it's possible for two different people coming from two different cultures to see two very, very different things. Now you may experience this when your brother or sister watches an event unfold and then you watch an event unfold and you have complete disagreement as you're talking with your parents about this event. And there is conflict in the same, in the same way that's what's happening in this passage. There's conflict between what Paul sees and what these Lyconians see. So Paul resolves this by, by stopping this religious exercise and explaining a few very simple things about who God is. First, he explains that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them. You notice that he doesn't go to the Old Testament. That is not their standard for uh, understanding the world. And so he goes to creation and he says, look, you have received good things from God. God has been kind to you in giving you the things that you need for your, your basic needs to be met. And that's his starting point for an argument. And I want us to notice that because the church not only preaches the gospel, our lives ought, not, ought to not only be Jesus-centered, as the Bible is, but we ought to practice this thing we want to call pre-evangelism. We want to explain the gospel in a way that's understandable to the people that we're talking to. So for example, if you're meeting with someone or talking with someone who's never heard anything from the Old Testament, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to make an argument for the Old Testament for the case of Jesus. On the other hand, it might be a good thing to start with the things that they love, that they care about. One of the themes that we're talking about this year is change what you love. So you don't start 
with something that people don't love and talk about Jesus, but you start with something that they actually do love. You get to know that. Maybe it's they love motorcycles. Maybe it's that they love uh, fishing or some kind of a, a sports exercise in particular. You start there and then you move to what God has done in and through that, that God has given us all good things for us to enjoy. And I want us to just reflect on a couple of questions after reading this text. Number one is, if you grew up in a Christian home, it's possible that you missed some of these basic aspects of the truth. You notice that they start with a polytheistic worldview and Paul simply moves them into theism. He doesn't go all the way to Jesus. So I just want to ask a couple of reflection questions in, in, in light of this text. Number one is, if you grew up in a, in a Christian home, I want you to reflect on that for, for a moment. It's possible that you started with Jesus at the forefront of your biblical and theological understanding of the world. And that's totally okay. But you need to understand that at times, it's possible that you may encounter the natural world and look at creation and be confused about what is there. You notice that these Lyconians, they're, they're looking at the world and they see a multiplicity of different gods. They want to worship them all and perform sacrifices for them all. And you recognize that the, the human tendency is to worship everything and not worship nothing. Right? And so as you go throughout your life, you're going to be tempted in all sorts of ways to, to, in all sorts of ways to worship yourself, to worship those things that you love, the things that you enjoy. That is the natural human heart and tendency. And it's going to be a discipleship battle in an ongoing way for you to continue to worship Jesus at the center as you see all of creation and its goodness reflected back to you. Now, the second thing I want you to reflect on is that as you approach people who are not believers, it's really important that you build a context with them of mutual and shared understanding. So Paul and Barnabas, again, don't start with the Old Testament. They start with what these men and women can see in the natural world. They start with creation and they show the goodness of God in creation and they point to the one and true God. Sometimes we like to rush to Jesus because we love him so much and we want to explain to people how good Jesus is. But it's important that we move slowly in our gospel proclamation and practice what may be called uh, pre-evangelism to help people to see the goodness of God in all of creation. That the things that people love are not inherently bad. That we don't want them to just leave, live these boring lives and take away everything that they care about. But in fact, we want them to take everything that they care about up into the greatness and goodness of God and enjoy him forever in a new heavens and a new earth with a new creation. That is the goal of all of uh, humanity is to move into this new heavens and new earth and a new creation. Guys, I miss you and I can't wait to see you again in person and enjoy creation together. We'll come at you next time with a new episode. Peace.